Um, hi, uh, thank you for coming to the talk and thanks to the organizers for organizing. I hope you can hear me. Uh, I'm going to talk about the average case complexity of counting cliques in Erdos Reni hypergraphs. And this is joint work with uh, Matt Brennan and Guy Bressler, who's my advisor. So um, first I'm going to give you the setup of the problem, then I'm going to motivate the problem, and then I'm going to explain the results and give you a brief proof to catch, but we don't have that much time, so I won't be able to give you all the details. So the setup of the problem is the following. Um, you're given a nerdish Rennie hypergraph, so like a random hypergraph, where each uh, S subset of the vertices is an hyperedge in this hypergraph with um, independent probability P. Uh, it's the simplest model for random hypergraphs. Uh, and you're asked to count the number of uh, K cliques in this uh, hypergraph where K is a small constant. So uh, think about, for example, the case of graphs where the rank of the hypergraph is two, then um, each edge, each possible edge is in this hypergraph, is in this graph with probability P. And you might want to count the number of triangles, so three cliques, or you might want to count the number of uh, four vertices with all the edges between them, um, four cliques, et cetera. So this is the basic problem that we're gonna consider. Um, so the question that we're gonna ask is, how does the optimal running time for counting the number of k cliques in a uh, nerdish Rennie hypergraph trade off with the number of vertices, with the density of the graph, and with the rank of the hypergraph? And in particular, how does it uh, differ in this average case versus in the worst case? So um, now I'm going to motivate uh, why we would ever consider this question of k cliques counting on nerdish Rennie hypergraphs. Well, it turns out that clique problems on Erdős Rennie graphs have been studied for a while, and maybe the most uh, famous or well-known example of this is the planted clique problem. In the planted clique problem, you're given some Erdős Rennie graph and a uh, k clique planted in it, and you're asked to find this k clique. And uh, it's known that this is a difficult problem in certain regimes for um, a wide variety of restricted models of computation, uh, in the sense that if uh, you want, for example, to, an SOS algorithm for this problem. Well, you have, it'll take super polynomial uh, time. Um, and it's also a question that has uh, interesting implications uh, from the point of view uh, uh, for, for statistical computational gap. Um, so if you assume that finding a planted clique is hard, then uh, you get statistical computational gap. Another problem that, uh, uh, that's studied on GNP uh, is to find the largest clique in a randomly sampled Erdős Rennie graph. And again, there are lower bounds for restricted models of computation. Another problem, finding critical cliques and many others, such as finding uh, large independent sets in uh, Erdős Rennie graphs. Um, so there's a wide body of work uh, studying clique problems on Erdős Rennie graphs, but all of these um, uh, papers uh, prove um, only hardness under a restricted uh, model of computation. And ideally, um, we would want to base the average case hardness of these problems on the erdős Rennie graph distribution on the worst case hardness. So we would want to say, for example, that planted clique is empty hard. Unfortunately, uh, we don't know how to do this. And there are, in fact, uh, barriers against worst case to average case reductions um, uh, of this kind. Um, so instead, in this uh, talk, in this paper, we're going to consider a different problem, a problem that's in fact in polynomial time. The counting the number of k cliques when k is a constant is in polynomial time because you can just do it in n to the k time by enumerating all possible tuples of uh, k vertices. Uh, there are n choose k tuples at n to the k time and checking whether each one is a clique. Um, so instead of proving that counting k cliques is empty hard, because it isn't in polynomial time, instead we'll try to like pin down the exact runtime that's necessary um, uh, based on a worst case hardness assumption that counting k cliques is hard on worst case graphs, we're gonna show that it's hard on average case graphs. In fact, it's hard on erdős Rennie graphs, which is sort of the simplest random graph distribution. So here's the plan for the rest of the talk. In the first part of the talk, I'm just going to overview um, the algorithmic results. So I'm going to just mention 
the, the previously known worst case algorithms for kickly counting on adversarially chosen graphs. And I'm gonna uh, mention some algorithms that uh, we have in this paper uh, for kickly counting on uh, erdos renyi graphs. And, um, but I'm not gonna be able to get into the details of this. Then I'm going to um, uh, provide the main hardness result uh, where we uh, show the average case hardness of uh, counting cake weeks on erdos renyi graphs based on the worst case hardness assumption. And I'm gonna provide a brief proof sketch. And we're gonna conclude with some open problems. There are a lot of interesting directions. So first off, algorithms for counting the number of cake weeks on uh, general graphs or hypergraphs. So in the worst case, um, there's for our hypergraphs with rank um, more than or equal to three, exhaustive search, so enumerating over all n choose k tuples of vertices and checking whether each tuple is a quick is the best that's known. And for graphs, um, when the rank is two, uh, there's a speed up uh, using the fast matrix multiplication trick. Um, but these are the best algorithms that are known. So we can ask, okay, what if we take a, a dense hypergraph? So the edge density is uh, constant. So each edge has a constant probability of being in the, in the graph. Is the complexity the same as the worst case? And it doesn't seem uh, like we can do anything better. Um, for the sparse case, um, when the edge density is uh, like uh, n to the minus alpha for some parameter alpha, then we can uh, achieve, uh, we can get better algorithms. We show better algorithms uh, based on greedy random sampling. And for the graph case, greedy random sampling with the fast matrix multiplication speed up similar to the one in uh, Nesitril and Polyak. Uh, so a couple of points. One, there are faster algorithms for uh, counting uh, k clicks in sparse order when graphs than the worst case. So this is interesting. Um, two, uh, we can ask what can be improved. So can we actually speed up any of these algorithms anymore? Um, well, it turns out that under a standard uh, sort of complexity theory assumption called the exponential time hypothesis, um, the worst case uh, runtime of quick counting on graphs and hypergraphs um, takes n to the omega k. So uh, in any case, we wouldn't be able to speed up the worst case algorithms too much, but we can ask, can the average case be improved? And the main result is that in fact, the average case runtimes um, really can't be improved that much. In particular, uh, the counting k clicks in dense erdos renyi hypergraphs is, uh, has the same exact runtime complexity as if I were to give you a worst case graph. So it's uh, no easier to count the number of k clicks exactly in a dense uh, erdos renyi hypergraph than if I were to give you an adversarially chosen graph. And also, um, in fact, we can show that the runtime that we have for the sparse uh, erdos renyi hypergraph counting is optimal in some regimes if we assume that the worst case um, uh, exhaustive search algorithm for hypergraphs is optimal. Okay, so I'm gonna get more in, uh, I'm gonna show you some diagrams <laughs> that maybe uh, make this a bit easier to visualize. But the takeaway is dense order of any hypergraphs, same complexity as the worst case, sparse order of any hypergraphs, the faster algorithm for them for the worst case, but, and we can prove that they're optimal in some regimes, assuming that the worst case algorithms are optimal. The worst case algorithms that we know. So yeah, so our main result now is that is just this. We're gonna assume that uh, n to the k is the optimal running time for counting k clicks in the nerdus Renyi hypergraph with rank more than equal to three. And n to the uh, omega k over three is the uh, optimal running time for graphs, for worst case graphs. Uh, and we're gonna show that Erdos Renyi for the equal counting is hard. So uh, in this diagram, the y-axis is the uh, log of the amount of time that an algorithm for um, counting the number of cake weeks uh, in a hypergraph has to take. And the um, uh, x-axis is the size of the cake weeks uh, that, you're, uh, that you're counting, so it's k. And if you assume that the worst case algorithm is optimal, um, you uh, get a, a sort of a feasible uh, regime. Um, so you, you, you can derive this blue 
uh, uh, an uh, infeasible regime where you can prove that there are no algorithms uh, that run in, uh, the, in that time that count k cliques in these sparse or just hypergraphs and, uh, and these, in fact, before up to the k cleek percolation threshold match um, are the algorithm that we uh, sort of derive in the paper for um, uh, counting k cliques for, for just running hypergraphs. Similarly, you get another diagram for graphs, but uh, here the region that's open is a little uh, wider, but we can pin down the optimal exponent uh, to be lie with between omega alpha over nine and alpha where alpha gives the sort of the sparsity of the, of the graph. Okay. So uh, just gonna put this wall of text here. You don't have to read it. The takeaway is that our main theorem is a worst case to average case reduction, which shows that if you have an algorithm for k cleek counting on Erdos Renyi hypergraphs, then you can use it, you can convert it with, a slow, with not too much of a slowdown into an algorithm that uh, counts um, uh, k-cliques on any worst case hypergraph. But the, so the punchline is that you get um, some intricate sort of average case complexity on um, uh, the problem of counting k-cliques in order to hypergraphs just from a very simple worst case complexity assumption. Okay. So I'm going to give now a two slide uh, proof sketch where I'm going to explain some of the ingredients of the proof. There's uh, not enough time, unfortunately, to explain the proof, uh, but this should give you an idea. And the starting point is the following. You can express, and let's just restrict ourselves to graphs for ease of notation. Uh, the k-click count in a graph is a low degree polynomial in the adjacency matrix A. So you can write uh, the number of k-clicks as p of A is just the sum over the subsets of size k over the vertices of the uh, product of the entries of the adjacency matrix uh, between every pair of uh, elements in that subset. Okay, so this is a degree uh, roughly k squared um, polynomial. And there's a classical trick for worst case to average case reductions for polynomials. So if you have some polynomial on a finite field, a large enough finite field, uh, then if, and you want to evaluate it on a worst case input, then it suffices to be able to evaluate an average case inputs. And the proof is essentially by you know, low degree polynomial interpolation. Uh, and this proof works if the finite field FQ is large enough, which is gonna be uh, sort of a technical issue that we'll have to overcome um, in the next slide. So uh, this was recently applied to fine grain complexity, which is the context of this problem. And uh, there's a paper uh, from a couple years ago by Goldreich and Rothblum, which applied, in fact, to uh, k-click counting, and in particular this polynomial. Um, and they run into this issue where they want this average case distribution to be over um, uh, elements of the, of the hypercube and not over elements of fq to the n, where the finite field is much larger than just two elements. And their solution is to replace each uh, finite field element with sort of a gadget uh, of unweighted uh, edges and they get a distribution uh, of over graphs that's artificial. They get very good error tolerance, but it doesn't seem uh, possible to arrive at uh, erdos renyi hypergraphs just directly applying their method. And so this is the main, the main sort of technical contribution of our paper is to show how to uh, apply these techniques uh, and adapt these techniques to get this very natural um, distribution over hypergraphs. And the main technical obstacle is to map a random element of FQ to the N to the erdos renyi distribution and ingredients of a proof include the following. One, we reduce to the k-partite um, uh, k-quick counting problem. And the reason we do this um, is because then we can use the special structure of this k-partite k-quick counting polynomial. It's just a color coding trick uh, to algebraic, algebraically manipulate uh, the expression um, and apply uh, some uh, results that we, we provide on the convergence of biased binary expansions, um, modulo prime. Um, and, and this is somehow like how we, how we get from uh, random elements over FQ to the N 
to uh, potentially sparse uh, Erdos-Renyi hypergraphs. And we also keep the field size small using Chinese ring and ring. These are just some of the ingredients in this proof. Uh, so I'm just going to conclude by uh, summarizing the contributions. The contribution is essentially to study K-clique counting on Erdos Rennie hypergraphs. We have faster algorithms in the sparse regime. And we base the average case hardness of this problem on its worst case hardness. And this differs from other hardness results for clique problems on Erdos Rennie uh, graphs uh, that I've mentioned, like planted clique, finding a large uh, clique, et cetera, because we're basing the average case hardness of the problem based on the worst case hardness of the problem, which is something that you can't really do for those other problems. And moreover, our results are tight in the dense regime and they're tight in some parts of the sparse regime. And the open problems, some open problems are the following, uh, closing those gaps. So finding uh, a way to match the upper bounds and lower bounds, or maybe extending these techniques to approximate the number of K-clicks and proving that that's hard. Um, if you want to get a good enough approximation of the number of K-clicks and also maybe improving the error tolerance of the reduction. And for more details, I welcome you to read our papers online. Thank you. Great, thanks, Anur. Uh, very nice.